take a look at this problem. We got secant theta is equal to negative 5 fourths. And they're telling us that our theta is between pi over 2 and pi. And we want to find sine of theta over 2. Um, first off, let's write down a formula for sine of um, theta over 2. That'll equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. Okay. They're telling us theta falls between theta over 2 and, um, or pi over 2 and pi, which is this quadrant. So this is where theta falls. Okay. Um, we need to find x, y, and r. Secant theta is going to equal to 5 over negative 4. Notice I put the negative on the bottom. Because remember, secant is equal to r over x. You can't have a negative r. And even more than that, in quadrant 2, the x values are negative. So I need this to be a negative value. Okay. Um, actually, I'm just recognizing that we're looking for cosine. And cosine is this fraction flipped. So I'll be negative 4 fifths. Well, that one is pretty easy. Now, we have to determine what our sine is here, though. Here's where theta is. And I want to pick an example. Here's 90 degrees. Here's 180. So I want to pick an angle somewhere between 90 and 180. Something easy to divide, like 100. Well, 100 divided by 2 is 50, which would fall over here. So this is where theta over 2 falls. I pick a simple number example just to wrap my mind around that. Now we're talking about sine, and in this quadrant, sine is positive. So we're going to keep the positive version of it. Well, let's plug in what we're given. we got 1 minus cosine, which is negative 4 fifths, over 2 which gives us square root, negative negative gives us positive, like that. Can't have a fraction inside of fractions, so we multiply everything by the LCM of all our inner denominators, which in this case is the 5. So we'll multiply everything by 5. So we'll take 5 times 1, we'll take 5 times 4 fifths, and we'll take 5 times 2. Well, 5 times 1 is 5. These 5's cancel gives us 4 over 5 times 2 is 10, which gives us square root of 9 tenths. Now, we can't have a um, fraction inside of a radical, so we'll split this up. We'll put a square root around the top, a square root around the bottom. Now, square root of 9 is 3. And we can't have a square root in the denominator. So multiply top and bottom by the square root of 10 to get rid of that. Up on top, that becomes 3 square root of 10. And down below, square root of 10 times square root of 10 gives us 10. And that would be our answer.